All right, check this out. I'm gonna cover here to this NPC. I'm gonna click on this NPC and it starts a dialogue. Yada, yada. Okay, here we go. And he actually even gives me a diamond too as well. In this video, we're going to code a dialogue system and we're gonna add NPCs to our game. Let's get started. All of the source code is in the description below. This video adds uh, five images to the project. These are included in the description below. You can visit my website and download any of the assets uh, from this project. If you've downloaded the starting code, then they're already included. Go ahead and jump into the content folder and we'll create a new folder called NPCs. We're going to create a file called albert.npc. You can actually name this whatever you want. Even the .npc part you, you don't have to do, but this is just a convention I'm gonna use. Take a good look at this for a second. Any line that's blank um, is said by the NPC, and then any line that has a minus sign in front of it is said by the player. And by doing this, you can actually just create a back and forth dialogue. Our Python will then take this file and read each one of the lines uh, when displaying the dialogue. There's probably many ways to do this, but I think that this is a simple way uh, to basically be able to add NPCs and also a very efficient way too, where you can just quickly add as many NPCs as you want. Let's go into components and we'll do new file and we'll say npc.py. Start off by bringing in the usable uh, class into our project. And we're also gonna have a couple uh, variables up at the top. This is where our NPCs are gonna be loaded from, any of our NPC files. And this is the distance from the player to the NPC as far as how close they need to be to actually talk to one another. From our last video, anything that is usable is something that the player can click on and interact with. The uh, constructor is gonna look very similar to the, uh, the choppable and the mineable classes we did in the last video. Instead, we're going to pass in an NPC file here. The on function is called whenever the player clicks on it. Let's get a reference to our player. Very similar to our other video, we're gonna check if the player is within the distance of that NPC, if they're close enough. If we aren't close enough, we're gonna come in here and just show a message saying, I need to get closer. If we are close enough, we're going to load the NPC file. So we're gonna load it where, uh, wherever it is, starting at the NPC file location, and then we'll come in and do that. It looks like this, it's just, I have word wrap on. I'll turn this off so it's a little bit easier. Uh, and then we're gonna load all of the data into the file, and then we're gonna close the file. So basically everything inside the file, we're just gonna read as a string, and now we have all that data. Lastly, we're going to split all of the lines uh, here, and then we'll go from there. For now, go ahead and print out all of the lines to the console, and then we'll do the next part after this. Let's now add NPCs to our uh, factories so that we can create them. Let's go into data, and then we'll go to objects. Up at the top, we're going to go ahead and import NPCs. Next, go ahead and scroll down a little bit and we're gonna go over here and we're gonna add a new factory. Let me move my head. This will come in here and this will create an NPC. The NPC will take in a name and it'll also take in an NPC file that it's gonna load. It'll also come in here and we'll take in a sprite file too as well. I'll show you this here in a second. To show you what this looks like, I'm gonna go into my maps and I'm gonna go to forest map. This is included with it, but you can add it to your own map as well. I'm gonna scroll down to the NPCs part. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna paste. And this is what it looks like. So it takes in the name first and then it takes in an image that we're gonna load. I'll change this, for example, to NPC mail1.png. And we're also going to load a NPC file the one that we have over here. Just make sure that this matches. Let's come over here and we'll test it. So we'll jump into main.py and we'll run it. I hit an error, let me fix this here real quick. Jump into objects.py and just make sure that the previous one, I'm right here, just make sure that there's a comma uh, there so that it separates this from that. Let's go ahead and test it again. Let's go into main.py and we'll run it. And there we go, we actually have an NPC. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna walk up to the NPC, I'm gonna click on the NPC. Nothing will happen yet. I'm gonna go ahead and close this, and in our terminal, you should see the file being loaded. 
And also what's cool about this is that it split up all of the lines of dialogue into separate strings. We need to now show the dialogue uh, on the screen and we need a new view to do this. Let's go over here to UI and we'll create a new file called dialogue uh, underscore view.py. Dialogue view is going to have very similar imports to our inventory view. So you actually could just copy from that and then paste it into here. The dialogue box in itself, we need to know the size of the dialogue box. And I'm also going to add some um, extra pixels at the bottom so that it doesn't go right up to the uh, bottom of the screen. Take a look at this. We have three labels uh, uh, for the speaker, like the person that's speaking, whether that's the NPC or the player. We have the content label, which is uh, the actual thing that's being said, right? What what dialogue is, is being said. And then the helper label, which um, essentially tells the user um, how to use the dialogue box. In addition to that, we also have a background image as well behind all of this. Next, we're going to specify the, the location of our speaker label, and this will be relative to the actual box itself. So this is 50 pixels to the right of the top left corner of the window, as well as this is 25 pixels down from there. Furthermore, here's the content label and also the helper label locations as well. You might notice X is gonna be the same pretty much for each one of them. Either which way, I'm still gonna just do X just in case you wanna change these later or adjust them. These are the stubs for the dialogue view. We have a constructor. We have a function for getting the next line. And each line is going to basically call one of these four functions, whether the NPC is speaking or the player, or we're just generally narrating something. Like if we see a bird in the sky or something like, oh, you see a bird in the sky. Um, we also have a command function. Our dialogue is going to be able to perform some special kind of abilities, such as giving the player an item or even jumping to another uh, part of the dialogue. Um, we'll get into that later. Uh, the update function is going to check to see if one of the spacebar or the enter key is pressed um, and then call the next uh, line function if that's the case. And then breakdown will just destroy the window and, and get rid of it. We're simply going to set the lines, the NPC, and the current player. We then are going to determine where the dialogue window is actually going to be or where the dialogue box is going to be on the screen. I've put the uh, X and Y coordinates up here. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go halfway across the entire screen, right? So camera width, right, uh, divided by two. Then we're going to go halfway of the dialog box, right? And we're subtracting it, which makes it go left. Um, and then this will get uh, this position right here, whatever it is. Next, with the window Y, we're going to get the entire camera height. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom of the screen. Then we're going to subtract it by the padding bottom down at the bottom. So that means we're going to whatever the padding is, which is these like empty pixels below the screen. And then finally, we're going to go the dialog height, like how big the actual box is. So we're going to go up by that. And that will actually give us the Y position of where the box should be. So that'll give us the X and Y position there. We're then going to simply call our create window function and we have everything that we need for this. So we'll come in and we'll pass in X and Y, the ones that we just talked about. And then the width and the height we actually have up here. We have everything we need to create a window. Finally, we want the window. We don't want the entity. So we're just going to get the window here. Next, we're going to create our background uh, image. What's cool about this is you can just set the X and Y position of it to the window. Now that we have the window, we can base all of our elements off of the window. We also get a reference to the sprite because we want the sprite. Next, we're going to do our first label, which is the speaker label. Again, we can just base it off of the window. So all you have to do is window X plus speaker label X and window Y plus speaker label Y. Um, everything can be based on the window. This makes us really nice and easy. These two look very similar, so uh, just make sure that you do them uh, differently. The content label, uh, we're going to pass in content label X and Y instead. Uh, and then the helper label, we're going to pass in helper label X and Y instead. 
The helper label is the only one that's actually going to get text where we're going to say press enter space. And this will help the user know what to actually do when they encounter our uh, dialog box. We're going to add all of these items to the window. Again, the window is just kind of a container that can hold all of our items and then hold a position. So it doesn't really do anything special, but um, this will help us later when we actually destroy all of these uh, items and close the dialog box. We want to be able to update our dialog view. This is a big constructor. We're still in the constructor here. Um, we want to be able to update our uh, dialog view. So we're going to add this to our active objects. And then last thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, set the current line to negative one. And the reason being is the fact that this, the next line function is actually going to just add one to each line. Um, I know it sounds a little kind of strange, but because next line is going to add one to the next line, we'll start at negative one. It'll actually go to uh, zero, which will be the first line. Our next line function is going to basically add one to the current line. If we get to the end of the lines, like if we get to the end of the dialog, take a look at Albert uh, NPC. If we get to this line and then they go to the next line, we're just going to destroy the entire window. So we'll call self.breakdown and then we'll just return so it doesn't run any more of the function. We need to get which line that we're actually on. I'm going to bring this up just as an example. You don't have to come here. So like, OK, we're going to start here and then now we're on this line and then now we're on this line and then now we're on this line etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'll come in here and we'll get the current line that we're on next if you take a look at this the minus sign means the player is talking and just if you don't have anything it's the npc talking essentially the way that this works is we're going to check the first character in the line to see what it is there's two more that i haven't mentioned yet so minus signs means the player is going to speak. So we're just going to call the player speak function. An exclamation mark means that we're going to run a command, which we'll get into later. The dollar sign is uh, where we narrate the line. So there's no speaker. It's going to be like, oh, there's a bird in the sky or something. Finally, if none of those are the case, if there's nothing in front of it, we're going to call NPC speak. The NPC speak function is the most straightforward of these. Basically, we have to set the speaker label to something, and we also have to set the content label to something. So we're going to set the speaker label to the NPC's object name. And we're also going to set the content label to the actual line itself. This will fill in this text uh, that you find in the file, like how are you, into that, uh, into that content label. The player is the same concept. We're going to type uh, U in here for the name. We could probably let the player name themselves later. Like maybe we, they can have a name, um, but maybe we can get to that later. And then we're going to do something kind of interesting. We actually don't want the entire line. Let me show you why. So in the, uh, in the file right here, take a look. We actually want this, and we don't want this minus sign. We want to get rid of the minus sign. Uh, so because of that, we're going to split the string uh, by doing the following. When you split a string, uh, you have a colon here, and then this is the start, and then this is the end. If you don't specify an end, that just basically means go to the very end, like just keep going. Um, but we are going to say, hey, start on the second character. Remember with computers, um, with lists, um, zero is the first thing. One is the second thing, two is the third thing, and so forth. So we're going to come and start on the second um, character, and then we're going to run to the very end and grab that. The narrate function is completely identical. However, in this case, we're going to set the speaker to nothing. So it's going to completely make that speaker label disappear. And we're also going to set the text to something as well. Here is an example of narration where we put a dollar sign in front of it and then we run to the end. You actually can use whichever kind of symbols that you like. If you prefer not to use a dollar sign, you want to use a different symbol for these, that's totally fine. The command function we're actually going to get back to in a second. We'll make sure that everything runs correctly, then we'll get to this because this adds more functionality on top of all of this. In order to check if a key is pressed, we actually need to do something slightly different. 
we need to check if a key was just pressed down. Otherwise, it's going to repeatedly uh, call the next line function. Let's extend our input class to be able to do this. Go ahead and jump into core and then go to input.py. We're going to create another set for keys just pressed down. And we're going to add a similar function to the other ones too as well that we've created that checks to see if a key is pressed down. Now go to your engine.py file, find the run function, and we're going to come into here in our imports. I have word wrap on word line 43 is really big. We'll come in here and we'll say uh, keys just pressed. This line is actually very big. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you the whole line. Yeah, I can't even show you the whole line. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do a slash and then I'm going to hit enter. And that tells Python to go to the next line. Yeah, that way it looks a lot better. Next, similar to how we're clearing our mouse buttons just pressed, we're going to do keys uh, just press dot clear as well. So basically every frame, starting at the beginning of the frame, we're gonna clear everything out. And then if there was any keys that were pressed in that frame, we're gonna add it to that, uh, that set. And then for the rest of that frame, uh, any objects and stuff can kind of see, oh, this key was pressed down or whichever. And then come the next frame, it'll clear everything out and repeat the process. Find the pygame key down function, uh, one that we're checking here. And right next to keys down add, we're gonna add an additional one to as well to it. So it's right here. The way you can see is it'll say pygame key down and we'll add it right there. Jump back to your dialog view and find the update function. We're going to check if the uh, key was pressed down. And what we'll do is we'll check if space is pressed down or the return key. Um, in Pygame, you actually can't type enter. Like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. You have to actually type return. If return means enter, so they're, they're the same thing. Um, and then it'll call the uh, next line function here if that happens. We need to, a way to be able to just exit the dialog early. So if any of these keys are pressed, then we're gonna call self.breakdown. The breakdown function is pretty straightforward. We're just going to uh, basically remove ourselves from the active objects, and then we're going to break everything down uh, from here. Last thing, let's jump into npc.py. Instead of printing out the lines, what we're going to do is we're going to create a dialog view instead. Quite a bit of code. Let's go ahead and test it. We'll go up to main.py and we'll run it. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and walk up to the sky and I'll click here. And there we go. And we have a dialog box and then just hit enter. And there it goes. And then once you get to the very end, it actually just ends the dialog. Click again and then try to move away and it should just uh, close the dialog box. What we've done so far can actually account for a lot of the NPCs in the game. You can now add NPCs all over your world and give them just simple kind of conversational things to say. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of games just take it to this point. So this video is already long enough as it is. So um, in the next video, we're actually going to make our dialogue scriptable. We're going to make our own tiny little scripting language out of these uh, dialogue, these NPC files that we have uh, to make it so that the player can like an NPC can give you an item or they, you, they can pick from random things to say or some other kind of powerful things. So we'll cover that in the next video. Uh, thank you so much and I hope you have a good rest of your day.